Alright everyone, it is me, Judson Chan, and uh, yeah, I had a pretty good night's sleep last night, you know, and today's my physical day off, so, uh, you know, nice and relaxing. And uh, I actually did not do any formal coding yesterday, but instead I watched a lot of videos and read a lot of material on Playmaker about, you know, using Photon and, you know, all the networking stuff. And it does appear that I'll have to code in C Sharp some kind of a server script. Uh, on the other hand, it does also seem simple. So uh, I think, I think, and of course, I now realize, you know, yeah, I could do a lot of things on my own, but I obviously don't want to. So I'm going to have to actually get both Photon for the actual matchmaking and Azure Playfab. I would prefer to do Azure Playfab for everything, but the problem is there's no documentation and it does not look user friendly if you don't know uh, anything about really programming or networking code, like which is my case. So I got, I have to go with um, you know the uh, Azure Playfab for the database. So you can so basically that's the MMO portion where you know all the stuff you accumulate in all the game modes actually goes to your stash or character base or whatever I'm going to call it. You know probably most likely a stash, all right? And then of course I also have to store all the stuff for eventually you know your base. So it's like it's like those uh, city building games, right? Those city building browser games. Uh, yeah, like these, right? Yeah. Oh, um, oh, City Bill. Yeah, but you know, basically a bunch of games like you know these things. So that you know, and and that will uh, have an effect on your character. In fact, I'll probably be where you get your stuff for free, and then of course you can also use that for crafting. Uh, I'll have to eventually figure out the system, but you know, and of course, like the best stuff can only be obtained uh, if you reach the max whatever, right? Max level of the building or whatever. Uh, and then, uh, you know, and it's no trade, right? I also will not allow pay to win for that because I'm, because I was, because I'm thinking there, there's like some things that will be no trade on the auction house eventually. But if you pay, you know, you know, obviously my company, you know, a little bit of whatever, you can remove the no trade tag on it and then make it tradable. So it'll allow, you know, non pay, it'll allow free to play players access to like some of the best. Some, but not definitely not all of the best pay to win stuff to give them like a taste of you know going actual pay to uh, pay, uh, pay to win right and then eventually we'll have real money transactions so that people can actually make money playing my game too because that's always been something i always just wanted so i just play video games all day because it takes because we didn't have streaming you know 20 30 years ago right but i still loved playing video games i just felt like you know we should get paid to do this because it's entertainment right i mean you know um, I mean, I guess conserve. I mean, I guess conservatives technically still give video games a lot of crap. But I don't hear too much about it. But just in case, right? It's like, well, you should just go out and get a job. Uh, and then you ask, uh, well, what about basketball players? Well, uh, you know, they should uh, get paid what they're worth when they go to the NBA. Like, how how is how is playing video games any fucking different from you know doing basketball and baseball and shit? It's the same stupid thing, right? You know, you're having fun playing a game. Right, just one happens to be a physical sport, and the other one is just you know on a computer or PlayStation or whatever console, right? Um, you know, it's it's just it just irritates me so much that people just cannot see the similarities. You know, it, it it's like I don't know what it is about humans. Like we're 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 just like not flexible, right? So, uh, but the good news is God blessed me with a lot of gifts and talents. So you know we'll uh you know we'll make sure that we change the paradigm in the end. So. Um, and uh, the other thing is, I also was, you know, thinking about, you know, game design, game concepts. So I'm actually going to have to also look, because uh, Escape from Tarkov does the Skinner's, bo Skinner's Box thing very well. They make it hardcore enough and meaningful enough so that you actually want to keep doing it. But they don't make it so extreme that, like, you know, it's going to be like World of Warcraft or even Assassin's Creed, supposedly. Because I never borrowed the treasure chest in Assassin's Creed. If it was there, I took it. If it wasn't fun, I just didn't do it. It's like, you know, you know, why bother, right? But I have a, I have a large degree of self-control, so that's that's probably why. Uh, and the other thing is, I'm also thinking about, you know, how am I going to deal with bad customers, right? Especially the 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 shit lib far left ones, right? Because you know they're going to be like demanding all this stuff, right? It's like we want this, and then they show no gratitude when they get it. It's like just annoying, all right. And I have to balance it with the fact that they do have valid criticism. It's like, yeah, maybe I should actually change this. So it's like, you know, but, you know, I'm, I'm a chat, I'm a chat enough, man. I'll be able to figure it out. Plus, I'm like 37 now, so I'm not 
you know, I'm not, I'm not such a big pussy anymore. So, oh, I, I know I'll figure it out. Actually, I probably already have it figured out. Um, let's see. And then, yeah. But, yeah, I do want to employ a Skinner's box, like pretty much every other game. But I don't want it to be, like, anywhere near extreme. I mean, you can't get around actually having a Skinner's box. Because if you look at the... If you actually look at how it's defined, it's like, yeah, just about every game has some kind of reward or whatever. All right, that's what makes the game addicting and fun, <laughs> right? But that's the key thing. You want it to be fun and addicting, not addicting but not fun, right? Which is which is what happens with most of these games. They just create a Skinner's box just for the sake of forcing you to play the game more and more and more. You don't even know why. And then you're like, yeah, this isn't meaningful. So, you know, I still want to make sure at the end of the day my game does have meaning. Right, and then it'll and it'll eventually become meaningful once the real money uh, marketplace is out. Especially now that we've got communists running around the Democrat Party. Oh, that's the other thing too. I actually was started this video like forty minutes ago, but uh, I was list uh, I actually missed. I didn't actually know there was a Democrat debate yesterday. It was explosive. So I had to re. So I'm actually rewatching the Nick Fuentes uh, D live stream where he was watching it too. I was, oh my god, it was the best. Um, and that actually will eventually lead into my next point, but we'll save it for the Bitcoin portion because I think I'm now, I'm now beginning to figure out what might actually be going on with this, with the crypto prices. So, uh, yeah, so with the video game stuff, uh, uh, let's see, I don't know, is there anything else? I mean, yeah, so I, I'm actually getting more comfortable and, you know, you know, and, and more encouraged, right? Uh, and, of course, now that I'm becoming a better Christian, I, I, you know, I'm always aware, you know, don't feel good, don't feel bad, just maintain a the neutral emotional state because that because you don't want satan to like you know screw you up right because satan will build you up and you emotionally will feel good and then only brings you down once with doubt and fear and uh you know uh, i i can't have that right you know so you know god's got to be my daddy not satan so uh so yeah and uh, you know i'm getting more impressed too with myself too because um when i run into a bug or something that doesn't work right it's like i can already i can already tell it's like yeah, there's like no point getting angry. I'm like, it happens, you know? So, you know, um, of course, uh, we'll find out uh, when like the game is live, right? I've got people playing and I cannot figure out the bug, right? So it's like, okay, so what do I do? You know, so to be honest, I actually think I might hire the spatial OS guys. There are like people who could do it for probably cheaper if I got like, game dev classifieds. But the number one thing I would be concerned about is they're going to need access to the source code. Right, so that means people can actually steal my game. Literally, they, they copy and paste it, and I have to sue their ass. Right, so I have to go with somebody who I think isn't going to, you know, screw me over. So yeah, I'll pay extra money to Spatial OS because I because first of all, they're, they're the professionals, right? All right, they. Um, I mean, they're so hardcore gamers and programmers that these guys actually almost pissed off Unity. And they actually revoked, and Unity revoked their license <laughs> at one point. And then, of course, now they fixed it. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's going to be expensive, but I think, uh, let me see. Uh, let's see, full scale, uh, it's it solving the hard problem. I mean, this is going to be really expensive, right? But, I mean, if it's an emergency, yeah, maybe I do have to spend like a couple grand to these spatial OS guys to help me fix the stupid bug. But, you know, as long as I'm using. You know, Playmaker, I've got Photon, I've got Azure Playfab, I've got all these people uh, who have very good support. Like, I'll be able, I should be able to ask questions and then, you know, ask, okay, this is what's happening. I really need to fix. My players are getting angry. What do I do? Uh, right? And there's going to be a financial incentive, especially by Azure Playfab, because if people leave the game, that means I'm not paying the extra CCU. Concurrent, concurrent, uh, what does, concurrent user, right? Basically, how, no, concurrent user connection. Oh, God, what does CCU stand for? God. No, not medical. Um, networking. Uh, photon. Uh, call control unit. No. Um, see, this is, jeez. Oh, CCU limit. Uh, concurrent. Okay, is current users worldwide for the game ID? Blah, blah, blah. Okay, all right. That, that's not what I'm looking for. All right, now I'm getting obsessed. But basically, how many people are connected together? Well, they actually charge me for each concurrent CCU uh, person. So if that thing drops, you know, Microsoft and Photon make less money. 
So yeah, they're going to you know have a huge financial incentive to go. Yeah, we better help this guy so the players don't leave the game, right? Because us video gamers were very entitled, spoiled people, right? You know, after five, ten seconds, you know, after smashing the computer, you know, we're just gonna log off and play a different game, and then I, I never hear from them again. So uh, yeah, so uh, the uh, so I think the coding itself for the game itself will be uh, fine, especially now that I'm gonna be using Playmaker. Um, so now I just have to worry about, of course, the networking. So, you know, Photon, the database, will be handled by Playfab. Uh, and then now, not, now that I'm not doing crazy political shit, I don't have to worry too much about deplatforming risk. I mean, worst comes to worst, I'll have to stop, you know, like you're retweeting Nick Fuentes, right? You know, I should still be able to maintain my follow, though, right? Um, but, I mean, that's, kind of, that's a pretty extreme level of, uh, you know, right-wing patrolling but you know given what's happening you know it's not it's not uh it's definitely not outside the realm of possibility which is another reason why i'm going to also do my best to make my game pretty right-wing but you know somewhat subtle right it's not in your face but it's just like it's as accepted as is right and then you know and then the liberals are just gonna you know not, like the worst ones will just naturally filter themselves out because that's why the first quest will mention the word christian right i i'll give away one line of dialogue right you know my character you know i tell you i i understand you to be christian yes and then you the character is like you know there's no voiceover for it yet right because i might change it right it says yes but and then i cut you off and say yeah don't go around telling people that so right off the bat everyone's a christian right at least the people that you play as so right, right, that right there should trigger enough of the uh, extreme idiots, and they'll just leave the game. They'll say, yeah, fu fuck this game. Uh, 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 it's it's right-wing Christian, you know, ze zealot, racist, homophobic trash. Right? It's like, j just because you mentioned that word. <laughs> so, yeah. So I got to make sure I get the filth. So I have, like, uh, my idiot detectors out and about, right? Because uh, people don't like being around me. Um, because I tell the truth, and I just am. Right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna actually exploit that gift. I used to think it was a curse, but I'm gonna exploit that gift now to its extreme, so we don't have too many problems going forward. But or at least we minimize well, not minimize, but we lower the amount of potential problems going forward because there's always going to be problems. All right, so I think there's more, but I kind of want to get back to the Democrat debate, so I'm gonna hurry up this uh, video. Uh, so as I said. Um, Michael Bloomberg and the Democrat debate made me realize that there is actually something to the uh, to this drop. So uh, let's get to that. So, oh man, wait, are we on? Oh, thank God, we are on uh, Brave. Okay, I thought I was on Chrome for a second. All right, so uh, great. Let me click this. Uh, so Bitcoin normie interest for this week is at eleven still. So not a whole lot going on. Uh, coin, uh, actually, let's go over here. Bitcoin dominance is at 63%, so it's going up. 24 hour volume is still pretty high, 178 billion. However, crypto prices are starting to tank. Uh, so I think yesterday it kind of did the same thing. Um, I can't actually remember what I said. Did I say it was flatlining, looks pretty good, but I wasn't sure, or was it going up a bit? Yeah, I think it, yeah, it must have gone up, and I said, we're not really sure, but it's looking good, and then now it could definitely drop, because um, I can't remember if I said yesterday, there's something not right with the rich people, uh, but we'll have to see what they do. Yeah, I, I, I think, yeah, I think I was pretty unsure, and I made sure to mention that, uh, but either way, it's pretty obvious that there is definitely something wrong. Uh, this is, this is more, this is not profit taking. At least I, I don't think this is profit taking. There is something wrong. Um, let me see. And from, let's see. Volatility is high. Uh, Bitcoin mixing. I mean, maybe it could be Bitcoin mixing. Uh, bearish beating. Uh, it's off. All right, so. Yeah, that's nothing. I mean, of course, I mean the U.S. I mean the U.S. Marshals, the U.S. government knows not to tank the Bitcoin market too much because they they are very well aware of how negative of impact on price it'll have. Uh, so the Binance CEO says the Bitcoin halving is not priced in yet. Um, as much as I really like the Binance guy, 
I'm not entirely sure if that's true. It's being priced in. Um, and then, will it, when will it finish? I'm not actually sure. Uh, let me think. I mean, I'm trying to think back to 2016, 2017 after Bitcoin halved. The price of Bitcoin was around 900 to 11 to 1200. I can that um, that was pretty close to the previous high that was established in 2011, 2012. So if history repeats itself this year, which it should, actually, yeah, Binance guy might be this. Uh, the CEO of Binance might actually be right. So that would mean Bitcoin should be hovering around 19,500. But they'll kind of just flatline around that and, that and then skyrocket, right? Because we got to wait uh, on uh, uh, on the normie interest here. Because right? as you can see, the normies were getting pretty interested in Bitcoin in the middle of May, right? But then it went back down and then Bitcoin and whatever kept skyrocketing, right? And then, oh, yeah. So, so, yeah, you could see right here that even though Bitcoin and crypto was skyrocketing, the normie interest continued to just drop, right? It wasn't only until the end of the bull run peak that the normie interest finally got into bitcoin and those dumbass retards actually uh, lost all their money right you know it's a, like we if you re if you do traditional investing like stocks and real estate this is always the story right you know and the rich get out when the stupid amateur normies get in you know and then they say it's a conspiracy i mean it's possible it's a conspiracy you know, I'm sure I'm sure there's some truth to that, but the, I mean the thing is, uh, you know, it's all still based on consent, right? Because these fake news articles that we see every day on Google News or whatever you get your news from, right? They're always saying, you know, buy Bitcoin now is the best, or sell Bitcoin, right? And then you know, it's on and on and on and on. And then, uh, but as you can see, uh, the normies just don't listen, right? They don't listen until it's too late. So. I mean, people still have people still have a large degree of choice and autonomy, you know, despite, you know, you know, how, how uh, just how bad things are getting in uh, in society, both morally and economically and all that stuff. So um, hold on, let's uh, click that. So, uh, yeah, so it'll be actually interesting for me to actually because I didn't do videos back then, obviously. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, cryptocurrency going up as these uh, this trend. So maybe we could use this as a tool, right? Once I start seeing interest sky start skyrocketing from the normies, that's probably when I probably have to say, OK, I may want to start selling. But then I still have to wait a time limit, like, you know, at least nine to 12 months. So we'll we'll uh, we'll keep it uh, we'll keep these things uh, in the our toolbox for now. Because the longer we can profit off the bull run, obviously the better for all of us. Uh, but we have to get out in time, so and with plenty of time to spare as well. So Bitcoin's down to 96, ni oh, 95, 94, so it's down five point three percent. Litecoin is down to sixty nine fifty nine. So basically, as you can see, it's red all across the board. Some take bigger poundings than others. Uh, if you were crazy enough to gamble on Bitcoin Cash and SV, you're now also down seven and a half percent to nine point forty three percent. So, and I know that people are probably gambling on Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin SV because even I was starting to get tempted. And then of course, you know, I was like, nah, you know what, just stick with Litecoin. And I'm glad I did. I just simply didn't do anything, right? Nine times out of ten, if you don't really know what to do and you're being motivated by extreme greed, right, uh, you better not do anything. That's actually the better move. And I was proven right yet again. <laughs> so I don't actually lose anything technically because I didn't do anything. So it's just, you know, I just damn, right, as Jesse Lee Peterson would say, right? See, I don't, I don't teach you to make the most money uh, and maximize your return because that's a great way to lose everything. That's the paradox of making money and investing. You have to learn to get sustainable good returns or sustainable great returns and then know that you probably have to uh you know exit at some point right because the more money you try to make the more risk that you take and the more risk that you take means you are going to lose all the money that you made plus extra right that's all that it means because because of mathematics and leverage i don't want to go through that whole thing again right but you know, you go up two x, you're you're gonna be feeling great. But then you also will go down two x, and you'll lose more. You'll lose all your gains plus your base capital, 
right? Because 2x of the larger number is always going to be more than the 2x of your, you know, starting $100 or whatever. That's just how mathematics work. That's why over time you lose all your money, right? And, it's, and then, of course, you also lose, you lose your time and your sanity. So, you know, that's why you don't want to go too crazy with the, uh, with the risk, right? So, uh, yeah. So you just hold the base asset. And then once you have enough money, then you go buy uh, real estate, right? Some of you will probably do houses. I think the smarter move is to do commercial real estate because it's cheaper. You get the tax benefit uh, quicker. And, you know, it's more, it's easier to manage, believe it or not. It's actually easier to manage, right? Just go hire a property manager and then you're set for life, right? Uh, if you can't do that, it's probably because you're living in a rural or very low density population suburban area with not a lot of people. Again, that's why I'm going to Tampa, Florida. Also, I'll have direct access to Miami and uh, other na uh, neighboring cities. So I'll be able to buy commercial real estate forever, right? Because it's basically like a, right, a, a neutral or right-wing version of New York City with, with a lot less people, but still more, but still a couple million people. So it's perfect for me. Dallas, Texas looked pretty good to me. The problem is I don't like sand, right? Like like Anakin Skywalker, right? I don't like sand. Plus, it's like crazy, uh, like bad karma, right? Texas is suffering because you know they're 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 too hardcore right wing, especially with the cops. And then that's why they're being flooded with illegals to balance it out. It's just it's just a nasty situation. I don't want to get caught in the crossfire when more race shit happens down there. So, you know, because who knows, maybe I would have been in that Walmart, uh, you know, shopping at El Paso. And then that fucking mass, mass murderer, you know, he'll, he'll mistake me, an Asian guy, for being like one of the Hispanics and just shoot me up, right? You know, so uh, it was really bad. It was really bad. So, uh, yeah, I want to avoid that. Uh, so dog coins down to 322.4 million. It's down 6.89%. Uh, and then of course we'll get to Steam. Steam is at twenty point ninety seven cents, down eleven point fifty three percent. All right. So why do I think this is going down? All right, because we can tell from here that there's no fundamental reason to worry, and this doesn't look like profit taking. They're continuing to tank it. Um, again, this is just a guess. I could be completely wrong, but I think it actually has to do with the election. Uh, most people are pretty comfortable. Uh, with Trump probably winning re-election. In fact, he may even go on predict it. All right. Uh, let me see. Democrat race. Uh, all right. We'll get. Actually, we will open the Dem nomination because that's where I'm going to get this Donald Trump. Uh, God, can I just get like who's going to win the? Here we go. 2020 presidential winner. Right. Trump is going to win right uh see this thing's a little weird because i'm used to like reading the odds on a british uh that's hilarious Hillary clinton's here on reading british odds uh but yeah this is actually i guess uh, let me see um oh by the way apparently you can legally gamble on this website predict it um i think the, i think what the, the to keep it legal they cap it at like six hundred dollars or something so actually maybe i do want to make some money doing this all right but i mean that's the thing i gotta wait till like november the first tuesday of november which is whenever this year that it's like yeah you know why i rather just pump money into uh by uh making my game because that's gonna make me way more money oh that's the other thing too uh i looked up hideo kojima the guy who made metal gear and then their sudden departure from konami so he was just like literally forced out of the company and uh yeah it basically come that came down to money because konami realized we should do low risk high reward mobile gaming and could and then hideo kojima just wanted to continue doing triple a uh cinematic movie style video games that are very expensive to make and uh, i don't want to get the whole into the whole thing but i spent a lot of time yesterday researching that and it just goes to show what happens when you're inflexible right i mean i, I love hideo kojima in fact i will use his partial name as part as a character a special character in my game which will obviously want to make sure you don't um get spoiled by the story and uh yeah but he didn't realize that yeah money is pretty important and then i looked up this game right death stranding it's not selling very well so 
you know, uh, it, it, it's basically over. It's it's over, right? He uh, he looks like a young guy, but he, he didn't update his bento model, you know, because today is different, right? That's why the game I'm making is going to be in Unity, because ultimately I do want at least part of the game to be playable on on the mobile phone. Even Albi Online, when I did was doing the research on how they did their networking, right? Because they mentioned Photon, which really and they didn't really they don't really use much of Photon to be honest. They actually said that they have one world, one server, any platform will connect to that same server. And that's exactly what my game's going to be, right? Because it's cheaper, it's more engaging, uh, and it's the most profitable. All right, you got to learn, you got to learn to, you know, you got to learn to adapt, right? You know, liberals are supposed to be good at this. And yeah, they are, right? But, you know, us conservatives like me are up and coming, right? And we have an advantage. We actually are capitalists. You know, we're not commies like Bernie Sanders, and apparently Bloomberg last night called Bernie a commie, but, you know, I don't want, don't spoil it. Well, actually, you'll be watching the video, so I won't be reading the comments. But, I, you know, I, I want to see that moment, right, on stage. So anyway, um, as we could see here, I'm actually kind of surprised that more people are actually betting on Bernie Sanders. The gap is actually pretty, is actually getting smaller. Uh, yeah, so that's actually kind of interesting. So Mike Bloomberg is actually skyrocketing, and I think what's actually happening is the cryptocurrency markets are act the rich people are actually starting to get the feeling that Trump may actually not win re-election this year. There's a possibility of that. And uh, because of that fear, they're actually tanking the markets. Because I actually thought that Michael Bloomberg running was just a stupid idea, right? But then now I'm actually quickly warming up to the idea that this might actually work. So uh, Democrat nominee. So Bloomberg has already jumped to position two. This is after the uh, debate yesterday. Very standard is still way ahead in the lead here. Uh, actually, let's see if Real Clear Politics has updated the polls because basically, here we go, 2020 Dem nomination. Uh, so of course, Sanders is way up across the board because again, People are angry, people are desperate, uh, especially people on the left, and people are uh, without God. So they're willing to resort to any stupid uh, uh, you know, ideology just to get what they want, because again, uh, selfishness. And uh, yeah, you know, Bernie Sanders represents the best way to you know, get that done. But if you look at the far right over here, the person that's skyrocketing is the orange line, which is Bloomberg. He's going straight up, and he's buying out everybody and everything. So basically, this is going to be between Bernie and uh, Michael Bloomberg. So it occurred to me, what if, what if people want to get the benefit of a Donald Trump, but without the nastiness? That is what Michael Bloomberg actually represents. So if people don't want to go with Bernie Sanders, they'll actually go with Bloomberg. Because I'll think like, yeah, he's a billionaire. Yeah, he's made remarks about you know women or racism or whatever. But you know he he apologized enough on stage. You know I could be comfortable with that, right? You know like because not everybody wants to vote for a real man like say Donald Trump. You know actually I got the like the sticks and hammer drinking from a cup thing, right? But people still want you know they want their health care. They want to be relatively safe. And uh, what you call? They obviously want you know make sure that the guy in charge knows how to make money, right? Bloomberg represents all those things. Now, you, now the problem is he's not very charismatic, and I haven't finished watching the debate. But apparently, you know, Bloomberg, you know, he started off rough because everyone was going after him. He's the obvious safe target. But progressively during the debate, because I only catched like the last half of the debate, you know, Bloomberg was, you know, kind of swinging out, out of the gates and taking pot shots to other people, too. So it was pretty good. Now, this is interesting. Biden actually was going down and down up a little bit. Biden? Oh, really? Well, either way, uh, Bloomberg pretty much could, like Mike Cernovich says, I mean, he's already he, he probably already has like a million tweets already. And he's, I don't know if I can even find it anymore. Uh. Yeah, this is yeah okay. This uh, yeah he's already tweeted so much already. So, but basically he said Bloomberg controls the Google News uh, information flow because you know, he he could just pay for all the ads, and that's actually true. You know, 
Uh, remember, people are gullible and ungrateful and stupid. And of course, now that I you know listening, to Je- no, I haven't listened to Jesse in a few days because I've been researching programming. But I also kind of just I've already heard pretty much everything he has to say. But yeah, you know, I'll still listen to his clips. You know, I, I want to see how other people with problems, you know, deal with their issues. Um, what should we call? They're very susceptible to repetition. That's why advertising works. That's why marketing works, right? You know, I mean, look, the you know, Republican Party used to be very anti-gay marriage. Now, like, what, seventy-four percent of them support it. Why? Because they've been bullied and hammered and pretty much propagandized. Because that's just how human us human beings are. Most people will not be you or me, or at, least, at the very least, me. I am very resistant to that, especially once I am aware that I'm being propagandized. That that, that you know that that well, I used to get mad because you're not supposed to get angry. Now that now I'm like, oh okay, well now we got to deal with yet another evil. So you know, but for the for the for most people, you know, Bloomberg will can literally just buy his way, you know, into the election now. Now he came in late, so I don't know what's going to happen uh, if Bloomberg can actually out, you know, out uh, outmaneuver Sanders in time, right? Because uh, here's the thing: the establishment really does not like Bernie Sanders. That's why they're propping up Michael Bloomberg, and Bloomberg also has all the money in the world, so he's in. He's in. You know, he's in the CFR, Bilderbergs, or whatever the hell conspiracy group you want to call it. Not conspiracy theory, but conspiracy, because the conspiracy is true. So it's not a theory; it's true. Right, so they're gonna prop up Michael Bloomberg because the last thing they want, because uh, again, for some reason they don't like Trump, right? Because he bucked the establishment and then they feel betrayed. But they also don't want Bernie because he'll do, he'll actually, he'll actually take on the rich. He'll actually take on the corporations and fuck everybody over. And then to boot, you know, people will get sent to the gulags, uh, and what you might call it. Um, oh yeah, we're all gonna be co- uh, an actual communist country. Right, people say China is a communist country. That's not true. Uh, they're partially communist, but they have a lot of free market capitalism there. Right, for example, they don't allow unions. It's actually against the law in China. Right, but you didn't know that. Right, well, I did, obviously. Right, that doesn't sound like a you know communist policy. Right, in fact, that's a hardcore right wing conservative capitalist policy. Right, if I had my way, I would ban unions. I wouldn't give a shit, even if the conservatives were yelling at me. Right, because I, I I can already see what's going to happen. Right, because you're now getting paid more than what you're than the value of your work. Right, that like I'm not going to do that. Right, you know, there's a reason why I will not do filmmaking in New York City because I'm not going to pay people fifteen, sixteen dollars an hour. I'm just going to move to Florida and then you know Tampa, Florida, and pay I think uh, eight dollars or twenty five cents an hour. Right, you know, you get paid what you're worth. Right, and wait, what's gonna, what are you going to do when you know you get replaced by robots? artificial intelligence computers and now i'm teaching myself programming i don't need it i don't need people right or i need i need very few people right what are you gonna do what was the union gonna do then what's your so-called minimum wage law gonna do then like people have to start thinking outside the box right uh but people don't do that so that's why they just listen to idiots like bernie sanders now with that being said you know a lot of uh a lot of union people are actually afraid of Bernie Sanders because of the health care thing. Like, they actually are afraid that Bernie Sanders is going to take it away. And Bernie actually said he will take it away. So, you know, what, what's their best option? Michael Bloomberg. Uh, so, again, I think what's actually happening, again, is the rich are now actually re, repositioning their um, positions in cryptocurrency. And now is a pretty good time, especially since... Bitcoin halving is like three months away. So they could attack the markets now just to stay safe. And then once once some of this chaos uh, works out, we'll find out if Michael Bloomer really does have the chops, uh, and because he's got the money, obviously, to uh, steal the nomination away from Bernie Sanders. And the fake news terrorists are already, already propping up Michael Bloomberg, writing articles, we should allow a billionaire to make the decisions. We should allow the elite to make the decisions for you, blah, 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 blah. It's, a, it's exactly like Metal Gear Solid 2 all over again, right? Where the elites or the artificial intelligence does what's best for the people. Um, and then basically saying we're not capable of using our freedom because we abuse it. That's actually true. Uh, but it's also true that we also have the capability to, um, you know, do a lot of good with it too. So that's the test of faith, my friends. So that's basically my theory. I think it's actually because of the election, but it's obviously still too early. And this is the day after debate, so 
Uh, but Bloomberg hasn't gone down yet. He only keeps going up. So he, he's definitely going to be something. We're, I'm actually going to keep this open. Um, we're actually going to keep this open, actually, because I want to see how Bloomberg is doing relative to um, Bernie. Uh, where are we at? 35 minutes. Oh, boy. Uh, you know what? We're, I actually think I'm going to skip the news for today because we already checked here. I'm not going to buy our daily holdle. So... Uh, We'll just go over the prices real quick and then we'll call it a day. Um, so JFC coin, you know, luckily is doing pretty good. Uh, right now it's at three to four, lots of buying, lots of selling, big numbers. Uh, that's all I care about. So JFC will be uh, fine. 404 coin on the other hand is just taking like a, like the biggest beating that you've ever seen. Like fear is just in full control now at this point. Yeah, we got some sales at five, right? But four keeps disappearing and like the sell, the selling pressure is just getting too much. So basically what's going to happen is it probably will crash to one eventually because these because these dumper assholes, I don't know what it is or why people are hating on 404 coin so much, but uh, we're just going to punish them for just not having any faith. So we're going to force it so that everybody that wants to take advantage of the one will just sell it at one. And then it'll eventually you'll, you won't be able to, and then the buy order won't even be here. It'll just be a big sell order. And then we'll just leave it there, right? We're just going to have cracks hold hostage, essentially, all of the 404 coin supply, right? And then what will happen is the price will tank on unnamed exchange, and that's probably where we're going to have to go to, you know, get our crypto. But the good news is you won't have to worry about IP bans and all that stuff because unnamed exchange will take anybody. They're still relatively small. Uh, and, th and then and then I'll carefully monitor, we'll obviously carefully monitor the 404 market, make sure it doesn't get delisted due to trade and activity. It's the same thing that happened with JMC coin. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, two by two coin on the other hand will remain stable uh, despite all this fear and negativity. Um, but it is starting to get weakened a little bit. But it's at 56, 55 to 57. But it's still going to be quite stable for, uh, for, uh, for a while. Uh, let me check my two by two wallet. Get info, find out the maximum supply. Mac, uh, the current supply of 2x2 two two is 3.2047.16 million. So 3.2 mil, a little more than 3.2 million 2x2 two two coins. So we're, we're actually going to be pretty good. It started off, I don't know, when we, I don't know, when we finally got listed on Crex, I don't even remember what the supply was. Was it 1 million or 2 million? I, I don't even remember. Yeah, but basically by the time both 404 and 2x2 two two coin you know, enter hyperinflation and really tank the price, uh, I don't know, we'll just have to see how quickly I can get a game out, right? And then uh, the thing is, even with the game out, I still need, it, I still need a lot of it to be tested because I got also add a lot of content to it, right? And then ultimately, the only thing that's worth paying for is the MMO portion, which I have to code. Right? <clears throat> And I'll probably, and depending on the situation, I kind of want like the base building thing to be there. And then the hard, the other thing is I'll probably need to come out with a map too, right? So for the full loop PVP mode, so that like when people get bored of battle royale, they can actually go into the hardcore mode. And then when they lose all their stuff, right? Because they'll die, and then they lose. I want to make it partially uh, full loot, like you know, in a let's see, escape from Tarkov stash. Uh, let me see if I can show. Actually, wait. IQ 200 stash management guide. Oh, yeah. Well, you just buy a case. All right, here we go. This is a good, good picture. Um, where, what site does this take me to? I just want to open the picture. <clears throat> All right. So, so here, like, what I, what my system's gonna do is this stuff that you equip on your character, right? And then uh, there'll be an extra slot here for your. Uh, uh, built-in like pistol or whatever I don't know I mean it's likely gonna be a pistol but maybe a different character to love something else so like eventually I'm gonna have ogres in my game because the because the Empire in my uh, game or show is actually gonna be filled also with a lot of ogres because you know orcs have been kind of overdone but I still kind of need something evil ish looking so I'll just have ogres It'll be kind of like if you ever play Fallout, like the Super Mutants. That's pretty much what I'm going for. But not nearly as, like, overly big and powerful. But they're, like, just think of those, like, really, like, just larger versions of, like, John Cena or uh, The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, you know. And then they'll be, you know, more, more a little more angry-looking-ish. 
so you have your built-in pistol or whatever right and then uh yeah so everything that i'm going to make it so that you are required to have like your helmet maybe your face your chest armor um <clears throat> Uh, I don't know if I'm going to make make it required to have a primary weapon. You know, I think I might actually will restrict it, but I'll have all this other stuff. I'll make it required that you have it, but if you die, you don't lose it. Instead, what happens is it loses 5 durability or something like that. That's the number I'm going with. And then you have to repair it. And then if you successfully extract from the full loot PvP zone, well, partial full loot PvP zone, uh, you lose one durability. So there's always going to be like a money sink right here, but it won't feel like a loss when you die, all right? Because that's the problem with Tarkov. You die instantly and you lose everything. And it's very tilting, you know? So, But I want to make sure that there's some element of risk. So you cannot queue unless all these slots are filled, with the exception of the primary weapons. Uh, but here, this is the part that's going to get full loot, right? The, the rig, the pockets. I mean, I'll have to call it something else, but there's definitely going to be some sort of rig. Uh, there'll be a backpack. Um, I mean, I probably won't even have pockets because, you know, it's kind of redundant. Just, just have a bigger backpack or rig. And then that will be fully lootable, and that will not have the insurance policy. So you have to extract with it you want to keep it. If you die, that's it. It's gone forever, along with all the loot. Uh, and then, of course, you have your stash over here, your hotkeys. So I think that's how I'll do it. And then if, once your gear, if any piece of gear is zero durability, you will not be allowed to queue either. You have to repair it or replace it with something else. So, you know, uh, so that way it'll prevent the hatchling problem, which I like the hatchling problem, but I'm beginning to understand why they hate hatchling so much, where you go in with no risk and then you come out with a lot of loot. It actually inflates the economy. Uh, you know, that's actually the real reason why. And then they just say, well, it's not the way the game was meant to be played. That's technically true, but you know, you're being deceived. Uh, I don't want to run my game company like that, so I'm just going to tell people up front, yeah, you know, the truth. It's like, yeah, well, it's not the way... It's... No, I'm just going to say, yeah, it inflates the economy, and we want to stop that, you know? So, and, and that's that, right? I mean, there are already... Battle State Games, the guys who make Tarkov, are already restricting... Um, uh, they're already trying to figure out how to deal with the hatchling problem anyway. So they have a simple solution. Just make it so you can't queue as a hatchling. That's it. Just make people go in with gear, even if it's shitty. I don't know why they don't do that. <clears throat> so anyway uh michael bloomberg is the guy to watch i think that might be what's causing it um and then yeah uh because this does not look like profit taking there is something going on uh we still can't figure it out yet though and i don't see anything on the news front so yeah anyway uh if you like what you saw read or heard hit the like button the follow button or subscribe button from where we're watching this from or on my YouTubes at youtube.com forward slash lemon factor BTC. Make sure you smash that subscribe on the right hand side of this page so you can, uh, you know, get the good stuff. Because again, I don't see or hear anybody mentioning Bloomberg or the Democrat nomination. All right. Because again, Bloomberg's greatest strength is that he's the most sane person that's not crazy. And he actually represents all the good qualities of Donald Trump with basically none of the negative, I don't like Trump for, you know, his language type of stuff. So Bloomberg literally is the nice version or nicer version of Trump. And he represents the safest bet for, uh, for really everybody in the country. You know, and on top of that, he's also white. So, you know, all the wig gnats and people are like, well, the white race is being exterminated. You know, they might not actually, you know, mind too much that Bloomberg will be president. However, I think Bloomberg did say he was Jewish, too. So, um, okay, so he won't, he won't get he won't get all of the wig gnat votes, obviously, but he'll probably get enough of it, right? His skin color still comes off as white. So it's more than good enough, right? You know, because it's like, you know, that, that, that's why racial identity is like such a powerful weapon. But it's also very dangerous, right? So, but it is what it is. So, whatever. We only are interested in the truth. You know, we can make judgment calls. We can make judgments later. Well, actually, you're not supposed to judge anyone, right? So, <laughs> that's supposed to be God's uh, job. Anyway, we probably need a. Um, I don't know. What's actually the better one? Well, whenever I wrote Trump, <clears throat> YouTube did not give me any page views until, oh, excuse me, until way later. So, um, yeah, I mean, this is about the nomination anyway. So, actually, you know what? We'll, we'll put this here. Uh, yeah, we'll get rid of Hillary Clinton. Mm. 
Oh, God. Please don't tell me I have hiccups now. I, I just burped. I should not have hiccups. So, anyway, I better sign off. It's already getting long, 45-minute video, and I want to listen to the rest of the other stuff. So, uh, enjoy the rest of your day or night. I will see you all in tomorrow's video. And thanks for watching. Judson Chan, JMC Coin, 404 Coin. The crypto markets are in full fear mode. Uh, the rich are definitely up to something, uh, but no one seems to be reporting it. So, my guess is it's actually the election, Michael Bloomberg. Also, I don't see anybody talking about it. So that makes it so that makes it more uh i don't say more likely like technically yes more likely but it's definitely a possibility right and it gets stronger every time because uh kenneth fisher the book that i read he actually said that 50 60 percent of the time that there's a brand new president the markets actually readjust themselves uh violently right because they don't know what's going to happen with the government right and that makes sense because there's a new president with a different point of view so a lot of shit's going to change right what worked before is going to be completely gone in the next president right so uh you know everyone's used to trump they know his antics but what if somebody else is in charge right bernie sanders blanco bloomberg they're going to make some changes to the economy right and that's going to cause a lot of fear at least in the short term so that's what actually what could be happening so uh, it's definitely something to watch. We'll keep we'll keep an eye on the predicted for a while, and then uh, yeah, uh, I guess we keep those two open. So anyway, uh, we need a yeah. So in the meantime, shit's gonna keep hitting the fan. We'll we'll have to just. I mean, it'll go up when the rich decide it'll go up because obviously the normies are just don't. They're not even entering the market. So, uh, but yeah, Michael Bloomberg, the man to watch for now.